So we've now have a Word document set up with some of the automated features in it. I've been through a couple of things with you. You can see how we can set up things like the titles in here and some of the other elements. Table of figures, table of tables. We might then want to put in some images. So we might have this subsection. And if you hit return, we're down to the next stage. And here you might put in an image. So there's a couple of ways of putting in an image. So you can embed it. OK. Or you can link to it. And what does that mean? This first one I'm going to show you sticks an image in where it's part of the file and part of the file size. This second option sticks an image in where it links it from a source. Now, the difference is in the first image, your Word document, wherever it goes, it's a whole document. In your second option, your folder your document is in that also contains your pictures, that's the document. Because if you send the Word document separately from the folder with the images in, it won't know where to link back to look at the images. But it means also you've got a smaller document for the autosaves. And that means it's just much easier to write when you're dealing with very large documents, sometimes with lots of images. So the first thing you might do is just stick an image in, a normal image. You'll go to insert, you go to pictures. You'll pick this device, and then it will say, where do you want it? So we've been putting stuff here and in um, software guidance, in MS Word, and then here. So I'm just gonna pick this picture here, and I might then wanna resize it down and think I don't want it to be huge. So this is the picture that I have, and that's embedded into the file now. And I might think, well, actually, you know, I wanna link to this. So this linked image. So if I now go to insert and pictures, this device, and I pick the same image, oh, let's pick a different one. I pick this image here, but in tools down here, I click here, oops, sorry, not tools, I go to insert, and I click on the little thing here, and I say link to file. And then if I left click on link to file, it puts in the same image, but the difference is it's looking this image up. It's not picking this image and embedding it, it's looking the image up. It's saying, it all that's here is a thing that says, oh, you wanna see this image? Look in this folder. And so long as the Word document and the image are in the same folder, it'll always be able to find it. And it really helps when you're doing very big documents with lots of images in. So this is a linked image, and this is an embedded image. This will make your file size smaller and easier to work with, but it means it's not a Word document alone. This will mean the Word document's a standalone thing. But you can embed all your images linked like this and save it as a PDF, and your images will display provided they're cropped suitably within the margins of the page. So if you've screenshotted something and you've cropped it and it's bigger, you need to compress it a little bit. So we have this now that we can put in. And another way you might want to put an image in is you might want to screenshot it. So here you might have a screenshot or we could just print the screen we're looking at now and then we could paste it in. Now I've got two screens working, which is why it goes to the full size here but I might just wanna look at this part as an image. So if I click on the image here and I can just find crop, now I'm gonna to have to move the video down. It's possibly underneath, it says crop and you might not see it because of where my little avatar is. But if I hit crop here, then you'll see it comes up with the edges and I could just crop this down to the page that we're looking at. Now cropping it just means you don't visually see it. So I can click on the image again and I can compress it and I can compress it down. So let's say it's high fidelity, apply only to this picture, delete the cropped areas of the picture, okay. Now it means everything that isn't this picture is gone. And then there's the picture, okay, of what you're gonna see. And the crop selection is just underneath my head here. So now you've got three images, three different ways of putting images into this, but we want to then have these images linked correctly. So we're going to create figure tape, figure headings for them. OK, so we've got a subsection. We've got the image here. So we're going to go now to references because we're dealing with references and we're going to insert captions here. 
So we go to insert caption and it will say, well, what caption do you want? And this is a figure, so that is what we want, okay? Now it might be you want numbering that includes the chapter number from heading one, separated with a hyphen, and that's fine. Sometimes that's the convention. Okay, so this will be figure 1.1, and often it's for very large documents. So the figure is linked to the chapter that the figure appears in. So this is gonna be figure 1.1. We want it below the selected item, and we just say, okay. And there's our figure 1.1, image one. This time we go to the next image. We insert a caption. We say everything's set as we want it. We say, okay, this is figure two. And the next one here, we go down to this, insert caption. Again, we want it below the image. This is figure three. So that's our three figures within this document. And then we can go back up now to the top of the document. And where we have table of figures here, we can go back to references. And when we say table of contents, we do it through here. We say custom table of contents. And the format is right, but we pick table of figures from here as well. Now, why would it not let me pick table of figures? Good question. Hmm. Okay. Usually, this isn't grayed out, and usually we can just pick it straight in. So let's cancel that and cancel that. We want to add a table. That's the table of contents, but table of figures isn't possible. I wonder why that is. Okay. That is frustrating. Text isn't going to help us. There isn't anything. Ah, oh, apologies. Table of figures is here. Look, they've moved it on this. We can just go table of figures, left click, insert table of figures. There it is. That's fairly straightforward. We say, okay, now our figures are listed. And then so are the other things here. And then we might want to put some other things in. So I'll stop there.